Let's imagine a poem that contains phrases in German, French, Sanskrit, Italian, Latin and Ancient Greek and then discover that such a poem is considered the greatest achievement in English modernism. We are talking, of course, of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, uh, in whose 434 English lines are intertwined quotations from different languages, six different languages, translation or adaptations from Dante, Baudelaire and many other writers, ancient and modern, uh, according to a collage technique uh, much in favour with modern artists. Of modernisms, the literary movement that dramatically changed uh, poetry, fiction and drama in the late uh, 10s and early 20s, Eliot was one of the founding members uh, and he became a cult figure in academia and among lovers of poetry, his status as a writer being sanctioned, finally sanctioned, uh, in 1948 by the Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, but if we take a close look at his life, uh, we find that the road to becoming a literary myth was not a straight nor an easy one for Eliot. He was a sort of amphibious creature uh, as a writer and a man. Uh, he was born in the USA uh, but lived most of his life in England. Uh, he was a great experimenter uh, in form and content but he was also a classicist. Um, he started with a deeply pessimistic view of life uh, which later turned into a serene and Christian acceptance of it. As a young man, he kept moving from place to place, uh, from his native St. Louis, Missouri, where he had been born in 1888, into a family of English descent to Harvard University, uh, when he took his degree in philosophy in 1906. And from there to Europe uh, to continue his studies, uh, first at the Sorbonne in Paris, uh, then to Germany, and finally at Oxford, England, uh, in 1914. 1915 was a crucial year for Eliot. Uh, he married uh, Vivian Haywood, uh, a ballet dancer and a writer, uh, a talented woman, uh, though afflicted by bad health and bad nerves. Uh, two traits she had in common with her husband, in fact. Um, in the same year, Eliot began work at the Lloyds Bank, um, which he never liked. Um, and although in 1917 his first major poem, uh, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, was published, uh, the years from 1915 to 1925, those ten years, were a great strain on Eliot as a man. Um, money problems, having to work full time in a bank, uh, poor relations with his wife, uh, his own nervous instability and a general dissatisfaction with modern life, uh, common to most artists of the time, all these combined to take him to the brink of a nervous breakdown in November 1921. To recover, uh, he went for rest and medical treatment to a Swiss sanatorium in Lausanne. Uh, during this time, fortunately, he also managed to finish uh, the wasteland. The publication of The Wasteland in 1922 made Eliot the leading modernist poet writing in English and thanks to its success he was able to leave work at the bank. The poem represents the culmination of the first phase in Eliot's career, uh, which might be called nihilistic. Uh, the poet sees only ruins and desolation around him and is concerned with the decay of Western society and culture. Uh, at this point, however, uh, Eliot's life and work took a different turn. Um, in the late 1920s and 1930s, Eliot found a way out of nihilism in religion. His gradual acceptance of the Christian faith is reflected in the poems he wrote at that time, The Journey of the Magi uh, and Ash Wednesday in particular. This reached its culmination with his best-known play, Murder in the Cathedral, uh, which is about the death and martyrdom of Thomas Beckett, and with a collection of poems, Four Quartets, uh, finally published together in 1943, uh, written at the darkest hour of World War II during the German air raids on Great Britain. They are perhaps Elias' most personal work, uh, since they are linked to places that had a special relevance to Elliot, both in England and America.
After World War II, Eliot was mostly occupied with drama, criticism, and reviewing. In 1948, he received the Nobel Prize for Literature, and in the latter years of his life, he led a retired life, mostly writing, lecturing, and giving public readings uh, of his poems. Um, he died in London in 1965. A century after the publication of The Wasteland, uh, Eliot remains a towering figure, and for all his classicism, and traditional views in politics and religion, an astonishingly modern poet. The cultural and linguistic collage at the core of Prufrock, uh, or the wasteland of the Four Quarters, bringing together Christianity and Buddhism, Western and non-Western civilization and cultures, for Eliot really the word of culture and ideas was a melting pot.